Hello from Australia during our self-isolation COVID coronavirus response period. I've been in self-isolation now for one week and it's not great, but you learn to deal with what you're given. As I mentioned last week, the rules regarding self-isolation for returned international travelers are a bit ambiguous. They've become less ambiguous very recently, uh, but only for travelers who have arrived from today, which is Sunday, onwards. So if you are arriving from overseas into Australia from today onwards, you will need to be uh, a mandatory quarantine for 14 days in a hotel that has guards and police, which is a bit of a drastic measure, but I completely understand where they're coming from because uh, the largest amount of cases of coronavirus have been from people who have traveled from overseas. But for people like myself that arrived after they announced the self-isolation requirement, but before they introduced the mandatory quarantine requirement, it is a bit ambiguous. The Australian government is keeping on uh, announcing that you know, if you've returned from overseas, if you're in one of the self-isolation categories, then you need to make sure that you self-isolate and don't leave your house and this, that, and the other. And then they also say that it's up to the state regulations and state legislation to regulate this. And then if you go to the New South Wales.health.gov or whatever the website is, the New South Wales Government Health website, it, it does actually have a section which is updated just a, a day or two ago to make it even more obvious that they allow, if you're a returned traveler and you're in your self-isolation period, that you are allowed to go for a walk in your garden or a short walk or short exercise outside so long as you are healthy and well and you're not showing any symptoms and that you stay at least 1.5 meters ideally two meters or more away from anyone else during that time. So I'm going off the state-based legislation since the national one says refer to state-based legislation. And as you can see, I'm not around anyone. And getting to where I am, uh, I took a path where there's not that many people that actually go down those paths. So I was at all times greater than 1.5 meters away from anyone. And I do have, just in case, when I'm around public areas where there's potential for other public to be around and where there is other people around, I do have my... What was an ant in it? I do have my face mask, which I can always wear. I, of course, I do not want to potentially pass on anything if I'm asymptomatic um, and I don't want to catch anything from anyone. This doesn't really stop you from catching it, but it does stop you from being able to spread it a little bit. A part of all of this virus thing that's going around, I've been doing a lot of research and I've been learning a lot about epidemiology. And so at the moment, a lot of countries are seeing a big rapid increase. So there's like an exponential increase where every day more new cases than the previous day are encountered. And there are ways to kind of tell are things getting better or are they getting worse? Is the amount of people that are getting new cases each day or found each day, is that remaining stable? If so, it seems like there's no more increase in the amount of cases each day and so you should start seeing a bit of a decline fairly soon. But that would need to happen over at least a period of about five days apparently. And over this last week there were four days where the amount of new cases in Australia remained somewhat stable. But then on the fifth day it spiked again. So unfortunately we're not at a stable level yet. Uh, hopefully with all these new measures they will be able to stabilize the rate of new infections and have minimal new infections and actually have our rate flattened curve. A lot of other countries have put themselves into a somewhat complete lockdown where the only reason you're allowed to leave the house is to go and get groceries or go to the chemist or go to the doctor or that sort of thing. Australia hasn't imposed those lockdowns yet but they have restricted a lot of what companies can do and what a lot of people can do. An on-spot fine of, of $1,000 if you violate that rule in South Australia. So they're not mucking around. They're very, very serious. And states like New South Wales and Victoria um, will move further 
down onto those two person rules is my understanding but states and territories will make their own announcements about those issues what you're now seeing with the national cabinet is what i've flagged now for several weeks thank you very much brendan thanks prime minister so i'm going to all right they've now made the change just very quick update literally just happened uh only two people allowed in public at any time and any sort of public playgrounds that sort of thing they are closed, so you can't be in a group of three or more people in a public space. It's two people per group in a public space, that's it. And they seem to have made it pretty clear that they want people to continue to be able to exercise. They don't want to be able to stop you from exercising outdoors. So if you are exercising outdoors, I'd recommend doing it solo, by yourself, or you can do it with one other person, but making sure that you stay within that um, at least 1.5 meters away from that other person so keep your social distancing anyway enough of the update now back to me earlier and they've closed and sort of banned any sort of social gathering venues so you can't go to the gym they're all closed i can't do my kung fu that's a bit of a bummer and they've somewhat closed restaurants and cafes and all those sorts of areas where you may go to socially eat including bars pubs clubs all that sort of thing so you can still get takeaway but you can't eat in anywhere. There's, they're trying to reduce the amount of possibility for people to have social gatherings. With the amount of people with reported cases of any sort of infectious disease, there'll be a spike and then there'll be a drop. If that spike gets above a certain level of availability of, say, hospital beds and ICU and all that sort of thing, it means that the current health system can't cope with the rest of the people within that upper spike. So what you want to do is flatten the curve so that it remains below that health system level. And that's called flattening the curve. One of the best ways to do that is to have isolations and social distancing. So people can't actually interact with each other and they can't pass this infectious disease on to each other. That's one of the best ways to flatten the curve. And there's lots of videos. Um, and things that explain this in really good detail. I'll leave a few links to those in the description box below if you want to do a bit of studying up on epidemiology. In terms of triathlon and other sporting related events, as you would know, there have been a whole bunch of cancellations and postponements. So some of the main ones that have been cancelled or postponed, uh, there is Ironman Australia, which is the event that I did last year, and that has been postponed to September 13th rather than May 3rd. Another one that I did last year that is also postponed um, is the Sydney Morning Herald Half Marathon. Now that one is postponed indefinitely. They haven't actually provided any new dates for that one yet. There is a possibility it will just be outright cancelled if they can't find a new date. One of the ones that affects me is the Triathlon Club Champs, which I also did last year and which I was going to do this year. Now that was gonna take place in March, but that has been delayed until the 19th of September, so I will most likely be doing that in September. Another one that has been causing a few little issues is the Ultra Trail Australia series. So the UTA events, they were also gonna take place soon, but they have been delayed until the 22nd to 25th of October. And it's caused a bit of issue because that's the same weekend as the Nepean Triathlon. And the Nepean Triathlon has been the last weekend in October for as long as it has been run. And so it's a bit odd that the UTA would reschedule to that exact weekend. And it's in a similar area as well. So that's caused a bit of a stir. And with all these events that are rescheduled to the second half of the year, that means the second half of the year is going to be very busy for events. There's gonna be an event on nearly every weekend, which is kind of crazy and kind of awesome. Another thing you could do is maybe do your training, but have an online forum where you all post your information. So you do a structured training session, but on your own and post what you do to the page. And therefore you can all sort of follow each other. Another possibility I've seen with a lot of uh, class type structures, so dance classes, that sort of thing, is that they've been doing online classes. So they post a video and you follow along from home or from a park or wherever you can with that video. Um, and ideally post your video back so that others um, and especially the class instructor can see what you're doing. And that is one of the things which uh, my Kung Fu school where I go to has said that they're gonna be looking into is a live or online classes sort of scenario. So they'll have live classes which they run and they stream and we all follow from home and we are still able to do our Kung Fu practice at home 
with help from the instructors. And even though physical classes and physical events aren't running, we need to make sure that we still support the structures which have those physical events. Because if they are still needing to pay rent and they're still needing to still pay insurance and all of these sorts of things, and no income is actually coming into that company, they may have to close down, which would be even worse. So while the physical classes aren't running, I will still be paying my membership fees and I will still be trying to actively do those classes where I can, but just in complete self-isolation. How are you dealing with this whole COVID coronavirus situation? How are you dealing with self-isolation? How are you dealing with social distancing and the lack of classes and events? Let us know in the comments section down below. For all these exercises that I'm doing while in self-isolation, I am doing a method of watches off. So I'm not tracking anything. I'm not looking at my pace, my heart rate, the speed that I'm going, anything like that. I'm just enjoying the run for the fact that it's a run, which is kind of nice. At the moment, of course, I can't do any long exercises. As part of the recommendations from the New South Wales Government Health website, which I am following, if you are going to go outside for a walk or exercise, it needs to be short. It can't be a long one. So for this just couple of weeks, I will be doing short exercises. But once my self-isolation is over, I will start increasing the amount of exercise, but I will be doing it in a responsible fashion. So it will be avoiding other people, not exercising with other people. So if I'm running, it'll be running by myself or cycling by myself. Avoid touching things. Um, if I need to cough or sneeze or anything like that, do it into my shoulder or into my elbow. Of course, I'll have this with me at all times as well. Where there are other people around, I will say stay socially distanced, so at least 1.5 or more meters away from any other people. Try not to use any public water systems like water fountains, bubblers, that sort of thing. Try and bring your own water with you and just try and be as responsible as possible and avoid contact with other people. And if you have any sort of symptoms of any illness, whether it seems like it might be flu, cold, or COVID-19 coronavirus type symptoms. Either way, just stay at home. Do exercise from home, do exercise in complete self-isolation just for a little bit to try and reduce the spread of any infectious diseases. Because remember that the coronavirus, COVID-19, is going to take a massive demand on the health system. So try and reduce any possibility that you would need to have an impact on the health system where those resources are much more highly needed for response to the COVID or coronavirus pandemic that's happening right now. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.